The advertisers are not spending their money, the creators are starting to leave the site, and of course that's going to really upset the most important people, the viewers are also getting away from the site. And it doesn't take much of a shift of these people to go and it's going to be rest in peace, YouTube. I'm not a vlogger as you know, every now and then you've got to come in and do a vlog to you know, have your say, to blow my trumpet and to tell you what's going on on my channel. And there's never any good news is there. <laughs> this year has been, I think, I thought last year was a bad year, this year has been by far the worst year ever on my channel. And I've been on YouTube for many years, over 10 years, it's sort of sad to say, isn't it? I hate, it's funny, in the real world not many people know what I do, okay, if that makes any sense. I only think my close family members know what I do, but other family members haven't got a very big family, they haven't got a clue what I do, they just think I fluff around home all day long. That's me, okay? <laughs> uh, this year has been defined by the advertiser crisis, uh, the yellow dollar syndrome, hashtag yellow dollars, whatever you want to call it. Uh, initially I thought I wouldn't be affected by this. Uh, a lot of my friends on YouTube were saying, oh, Leo, I'm getting these videos, you're now being deemed non-advertiser friendly. and uh, well, a lot of them didn't realize that this was going on until they started the filter down in the video manager to find these videos. They weren't being notified this was going on, okay? And they thought, well, this is fickle because as far as we're concerned, these videos are okay. So it becomes a tussle between the machine learning robot, what it thinks is inappropriate versus what you think is appropriate and what Google have outlined as being advertiser friendly, which I think that read to me is very, very strange, okay? Very worthwhile reading. I'll, if I remember, I'll put all the links down in this video, okay? So, I thought initially I was going to go through unscathed because I thought to myself, you know, I tend not to produce on that edge. On that, you know, the edgy stuff on YouTube. I've been a fairly safe producer. Uh, and I think this yellow dollar syndrome advertiser confidence thing is going to make a lot of the edgy producers rethink what they produce on YouTube and it's going to affect uh, the overall feel of YouTube. It's going to become a very soft site. Okay, and that's sad because YouTube was one really nice aspect of YouTube. It did have a bit of an edge to it, especially those earlier years. So I started getting hit up with the yellow dolls, and then I noticed that these videos couldn't pull a thousand views in a month to get a review. And I thought to myself, well, what do I do here? Do I delete the video and re upload it and have another a go? Because in my heart, I felt like these videos uh, didn't breach the guidelines. And I was speaking about this with other YouTubers, and my good and long-term friend on the site, Beanmeister22, came up with a very simple solution. And this wasn't my idea. And the, the thing about this problem is, I don't hear many people coming up with simple solutions. Okay, Beanmeister sees the site differently to me. I see the site differently to him. When we talk, we often resolve things. Okay, I've given him some great tips over the years. Man, he's given me some fantastic tips. Okay, he taught me how to get videos to be very popular. And this is from a YouTuber who, in essence, is a very small YouTuber. <laughs> Mind you, he's a bigger YouTuber than me now, so maybe I've got to start following his trend. Okay. He gave me the suggestion, run those videos that have got the yellow dollars that you're asking for review, run them on your channel page. Now, lucky for me, my channel page is fairly, fairly popular, okay? A lot of YouTubers wouldn't have that luxury, okay? So I thought to myself, wow, this yellow dollar syndrome is going to really get a lot of people caught because there's that 1,000 views per month threshold you've got to get before a human comes and looks at your video. Now I thought to myself, if they are doing human re reviews, imagine being one of these people being paid to look at all this different YouTube content. How would you feel after doing this for a week of just watching videos and you're trying to fit the video into the guidelines thinking, has this breached the guidelines or is this video okay? How is that person going to make a, a judgment after a week of looking at videos and it's going to be all sorts of stuff? Imagine how you, where your mindset would be. I know with myself, sometimes if you watch too much TV or too much YouTube, you start to go psycho. Okay? That's, just how, that's just how you start to feel because, you know, it starts to affect you, be it in a good or a bad way. But anyway, Beanmeister22's little idea actually worked for me. And one by one, I think I've had about eight videos which have fallen to the yellow dollar sign. Maybe I'm one of the lucky ones that only had eight. I know some other people have been really, really hammered, okay, really hammered, and there's been the feel, and this is the part which I'm sort of saying, wow, YouTube, you better be careful, or slash Google, Google, you better be careful, because when the producers start to lose confidence in the site, we start to look for other sites to play, and that's what's going on a lot this year, okay? The other thing that's been going on, and I can't stand this, 
I can't stand this. So the people setting up the Patreon pages, I've noticed that Google are coming in and starting to really be very careful about who links to this because they know this will start eroding the site as well because the last thing viewers want to hear is people begging for money and that's what's really going on a lot. I mean, I'm starting to see producers come on and saying, oh, I can't talk about this anymore without using the G word because the G word will trigger this. Okay, that's one thing I've learned. But anyway, we're not going to talk about this, but I want, I'm going to start asking you to go to my Patreon page. Can you throw me some money? And these people seem not to stop to ask for money. It's become like, it's easier just to ask for money than to actually sit down and produce something. It's quite a peculiar bend. Let me just go to a, a pad of paper here because I want to talk about a, a very important triangle of confidence that goes on that I was taught by a Google staffer who fixed my account when it was out of alignment. I, it's it, Whenever the Google staff talked to me, I had my ears pricked well forward, I can tell you. I listened very, very carefully because you get some great tips from them. And this triangle isn't a secret. It's more to do with the advertisers, the way the advertisers look at the site. Let's have a look at the very important triangle of confidence. Well, here I'm going to draw my greatest triangle in life. You'll probably find I'll never be a pharaoh because my triangles tend to be a little bit sideways. Up at the top of the triangle, we have the viewers. Important people. Down the bottom of the triangle, we've got the advertisers. I'm going to mark the advertisers as a dollar sign. I'm going to put two strikes through there. And we've got the producers. I'll pull on creators. Important people as well. So there's our triangle, and what is in the middle of this triangle, and it is the thing that's sort of controlling it all, is the big G. That's Google. So in this very important triangle shape, which one of these corners has the biggest influence? Remember, they are all related to each other with the controlling body in the middle. Well, what we've seen during this year, we've seen these people here, the advertisers, get a bit cranky. And they got cranky because they weren't happy with the way some of their ad money was being split up over some of the creators. So the big G decides to implement some plans, and in the end, what that did was it started to cheese off these people here, and they're called the creators. It's people like me. Once the creators are upset enough and stop producing the goods, guess who else gets upset? It's you, the most important part, I think, of the triangle, the viewers. I have seen versions of this where you draw arrows of the flow of money to Google, part of the money comes back to the creators, the creators create something with that, the viewers then see what you've created, they might click on an ad which makes the advertisers happy. Now there was a time, a peculiar time, and I was on YouTube before you had these two elements here, when you had purely the creators and the viewers. And in a very strange way, that simple relationship there was YouTube when it was at its best, some would argue, because in the end, you know what? Money always causes trouble. So Google better start working fast because they've got to get this sorted out. It's becoming very, very unbalanced. And to me, this is what YouTube looks like today. It's starting to look pear-shaped, okay? The advertisers are not spending their money. The creators are starting to leave the site. And of course, that's going to really upset the most important people. The viewers are also getting away from the site. And it doesn't take much of a shift of these people to go, and it's going to be rest in peace, YouTube. So from this very messy pear shape, what Google have got to try and do is get back to a nice triangle like this. And to let you understand how we got to the pear, let me give you my little version of history, okay? Of how I saw of what went on on YouTube in the time that I've been playing on the site. I hope I'm right here, 2005, YouTube starts. It was also the birth of the Fred channel. Very important channel to study if you want to understand earlier YouTube. In 2006, Google bought YouTube, for better or for worse. I think it was for better. And there were the basis of early ads were here, but it was very, very selective where they went. In 2007, a partner program, I believe, was launched. I hope I'm correct. There was also the thing that almost brought YouTube down, Google versus copyright, and the resolution to this was Google developed the content ID tools, very clever tools. It's also the year when I started Leo Kim Video, right at the start of 2007. Fantastic year. I shouldn't tell you this, but where I started my YouTube channel was at a TAFE course. TAFE is a learning college in Australia. I was studying real estate. Don't ask me why. It was actually half interesting, but it was also half boring as well. I think the main thing I learned was buyers are liars. Okay, just remember that line, buyers are liars. Uh, it took me a while to get into YouTube because initially I didn't understand the site because I started in 2007, had already been up and running for a couple of sites. Work colleagues that I 
worked with said to me all the time, Leo, put your silly videos up on YouTube. We're already on YouTube. We've got accounts. Get in before it's too late. And I just said, oh, this will be like a flash in the pan from what I can see going on. This is nonsense. But the one thing that really impressed me about YouTube, and it links back to my channel icon, this is the secret. I've sort of said this to people. People might have worked this out. Is I'd searched up something that I hadn't seen since I was three or four years old. There was a TV show, Japanese anime called Prince Planet. Okay, and I just thought, oh, well, I'm going to I'm going to type in something I haven't seen for like 37 years. That's back in 2007. So I typed in Prince Planet, and bang, up came a TV show, a black and white TV show that I have not seen since I was a kid. It had an incredible emotional effect on me. In fact, it gives me tingles right now thinking about it. And that was the essence of early YouTube. You could literally type anything in and you could find stuff because what was going on was people were uploading a lot of nostalgia stuff. It was just, well, basically everything. It was a very, very vibrant site for finding just about everything. But that sort of changed because as the years rolled on, when I went to type in Prince Planet, I noticed it was blocked in my country. And that starts to escalate into other stories about how the site has changed and how it gets manipulated by Google or by the producers. Maybe I should do a separate video and talk about that. I've got some good info about that and things that I've learned along the way. But typing in Prince Planet and then seeing a show I hadn't seen since I was very, very young. Wow, that was an amazing feeling. And that really gave me the heart to join YouTube. And that's why I'm on the site. Yes, yeah, 2007. It seems so long ago. My first friend in this year was a gentleman called Scary Dave. Okay, curious guy and very similar to me in many ways, which is unusual. 2008, uh, Ray William Johnson equals three. Go and look at his channel page. That's the date it's got, although people may argue it wasn't 2009. Hmm. But in 2009, Fred, who was there at the start, who was mega big by this time, had one million subs. He would have been the first person to get a gold play button, okay? It's also the year when I became partnered with Google. Now, the funny thing here is people say, well, why wasn't it earlier? Because... What happened with YouTube was that sometimes it took a couple of years for things to roll out to other countries and because I live in Dutt, Australia, 2009 was when I partnered. I'm going to jump up to 2011. It was a very strange year. I remember it quite well for the wrong reasons. It was like a big owl change. The algorithm changed. It was like the end of the fake and gay, end of the ghost girls, end of the fun videos, end of the scam videos. It was almost like YouTube was starting to become more serious, and to do silly stuff was no longer the thing of views. For me, my first four years on the site were by far the most successful. In this time of YouTube, I could literally throw up anything and it would become quite successful. But all of a sudden, there's a red line that divides here. Things really change from here on, and we'll talk about the year 2012. So 2012 designates the hardest years for me on YouTube and continues to today. The Reply Girls algorithm change came in. You can go and read a wiki page about that. I won't explain that. It's best to go and read the wiki page. The attention span data became important on what was to be popular and not popular on YouTube. That's what's said to you, but who knows what really goes on. This is what has caused today's drama that we have now. It was called Partner for All. That's where the scrutiny of whoever was monetizing videos diminished to near zero. Also the time of the clone channel syndrome, as I called it. And it's strange because now look at this here. In this time of YouTube, going up to 2017, this was the easy to partner, okay? But if I go back and look at those earlier years, there was a lot of scrutiny going on. It was difficult to partner. I remember when I saw the whole partner for all thing come up, I saw it as a warning sign. Beanmeister22 said, Leo, manipulate it for your purposes. And that's the thing. A lot of people manipulated this to their purposes. A whole bunch of rubbish got uploaded to YouTube. It was like a free-for-all. It was actually quite manic to see. And I ended up calling it the five-year nightmare because what happened on the site, all of a sudden, it was actually really hard uh, to, to be popular on YouTube. Because you're up against masses and masses of content just being pumped onto the site. And no one seemed to be giving a check of what was going on. Brings us up to 2017, hey. So what do we get? The advertisers start to wake up to this. There's the ad crisis. So our, our ad, our money's being spent on some really, really radical types of videos. YouTube bring in like this machine learning that was totally wrong and seems to get it wrong so many times. Everyone's getting copped with the yellow dollar sign, so all the producers have got the huff of the site and are now trying to get off the site. And Google starts to be a little bit more scrutiny about, well, who wants to be a partner? Who's going to be a partner? So they bring in this rule here. You need to have 10,000 channel views to be reviewed by Google to be a partner. 
Oh, well, Google, that was a little bit too late. You know why? Because the horse has already bolted. I hope I've got my dates and info right here, but really the main thing is this red line. This red line, I could really tell you some stories about what went on between 2011 and 2012. Like I said, for me, this was the hardest years on YouTube, continues on to today. Yet, it's the easiest time to partner. Maybe this is going to change, hey? We, let's hope so. Yet, in those earlier years, man, it was so easy to pull views and be effective on the site. But yet, back then, it was the most difficult time to partner. Another way, instead of all the scribbling here, I just should have drawn a nice triangle of confidence that was working really well back here. And a great big fat pear shape that has become the YouTube of today. It really is food for thought, isn't it, hey? I don't vlog very often, but hopefully when I do vlog, I've got something worthwhile to say. Maybe you agree with what I said here, maybe you disagree. I think what I'd like to see happen, and please listen to me, Google, because I'm starting to feel hammered, okay? If I can get through videos which have been struck out by your stupid robot, which gets it wrong so many times, let's say if it gets it wrong five times on a channel, then give the whole channel a green light, because I'm not the style of producer that pushes the edge when it comes to putting risque stuff up onto the site. I'm a pretty clean and boring producer. I think that's fair. If the robot gets it wrong, let's say five times, some people might say like three strikes and you're out and a robot will end up saying, right, your channel's clean. Please do this because you are destroying the confidence of the producers. Once we go, who's gonna make your silly videos for you? And just on the thought of silly and pointless videos being uploaded to YouTube, I'm an expert at that. I've had the opportunity to video something in the backyard that's going to really put that machine learning robot to a test. Now, from other producers who I know and trust, they've started to tell me the styles of videos that seem to constantly get those stupid yellow dollar signs. There seems to be some very similar visual cues that this stupid robot seems to get totally confused with. But it also had me thinking, are we dealing with the machine learning robot or are we dealing with people who are flagging these videos? Because... This is another aspect to what may be going on because at the moment it seems like it's very, very easy to trigger a flag on the site. Anyway, the little test video will be uploaded soon and I'm sure my audience are going to have lots and lots and lots of stories about those ridiculous yellow dollar signs and the damage it's been doing to them in the way they feel about YouTube. I'd love to hear your stories.